770 Bruce. And, you know, this is our brand new Sirius XM studios here in Las Vegas. And who better to help us christen the new studio than uh, Bruce Springsteen himself? Hello, Bruce. Welcome back to E Street Radio. Viva, viva Las Vegas. <laughs> How <are you> doing? <laughs> I'm doing oh, great. How are you? We're good. good. We're good. We're good. We uh we just opened a brand new Sirius XM studio. We're in Las Vegas. We're at the Wynn Hotel and uh wow. everybody's just super Yeah, it's beautiful. It's it's really really nice. And uh we we can't wait to see you and the band back on stage tomorrow night. Uh how did it feel to get back out there? So good. <laughs> <laughs> so damn good. I mean, first of all, Phoenix is a great town for us, and mm -hmm. the crowd was off the Richter, off the Richter scale. It was a wonderful crowd we had, and the band just played great. You know, and uh, you know, I thought you might be tired, you might be a little fatigued, you might be a little rusty. No, you know, the guys were just fabulous from first song on, and. Uh, I felt great, and the whole band felt great. It was just, it was just a real. Uh, we couldn't have had a better opener, you know. It was just, just fantastic in Phoenix, just wonderful. So we're looking forward to coming to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. You could feel the energy from from you and the band. I, did it? Was there sort of this, like you said, you, you weren't sure if you were going to be rusty or not? Was there a little bit of a sense of relief once that first song is done? Once you know, Lonesome Day is is up and running. Yeah, well, once I started singing, you know, you can rehearse singing, but your voice isn't the same at rehearsal. <clears throat> you don't you don't have that edge of adrenaline that really pushes it into a, a better place. So, mm -hmm. and the thing that I had when I had the stomach problem, one of the big problems was I couldn't sing. Yeah, you sing with your di you sing with your diaphragm. You know, my diaphragm was hurting so badly that when I went to make the effort to sing, it was killing me. You know, so I literally couldn't sing at all, you know, and that lasted for two or three months, mm -hmm. you know, along with, along with just a myriad of other painful problems, you know. So, uh, you know, I was during the course of it before people told me, oh, no, it's going to go away and you're going to be okay. You know, you're thinking like, hey, am I going to sing again? And, and uh you know, this is one of the, one of the things I love to do the the best, the most, and and right now I can't do it. You know, yeah. I can't do it. So, and it took a while for the doctors to say, "Oh no, you're going to be okay." At first, nobody was quite saying that, which made me nervous. <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm sure. the other day I found some great doctors and they straightened me out, and uh, I can't do anything but thank them all. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the tour, you know, the tour started last year in February and everything was great. And, and of course, you had to worry about COVID. It was still there. It still existed. Yeah. And that started to happen as the tour went on. Different members of the band were, were you know, missing shows. So that's a tough well, adjustment we, to make, I'm sure. Well, when we first started that tour, every night somebody else was out. So yeah. I go into sound check. I, I have to find out who's missing. And then I have to rearrange the stage or all, all the arrangements of the songs to cover for that person. Eddie Mannion stepped up and covered for Jake Clemens on the saxophone. I brought Anthony Almonte to the front when Steve couldn't make it. Uh, er, Nils couldn't make it another night. Susie missed another night. Lisa Lowell. I mean, it was just one after another. The only thing that we were blessed, Max didn't fall. Gary yeah. didn't fall. Your rhythm section. And our two keyboards, two keyboardists were there. So as long as we had those people, we could do a show, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was, it was just like, oh, you know, what next, you know? And, and finally we got past that point, which took a couple of weeks, if not more, you know? And right. I mean, knock on wood, because everybody's been very healthy since then. There we go. Which is great. Which is great. Which great. So right. So you get past the, the different members of the band, you know, coming down with COVID, and then at some point is it well something happens to you, and then so it was a it, it was a great there, was, there were great shows. They were awesome. Great seeing you and the band on stage. But I'm sure that you know was a it was a rough ride 2023. Well, the last four shows I was playing really ill. So that was Foxborough, which was a great show. Uh, mm -hmm. And the three Meadowlands shows, which were all 
all really good band playing at its best and in, in, in front of a great New Jersey audience and, and a great Boston audience. But I was really not well. And, uh, you know, I had a little medication in me that, kept, that got me up there and kept me up there for the rest of the night. And, you know, once you're on stage, you're just, you're letting it go no matter what, you know, you're playing as hard as you can. And, and, uh, uh, they ended up being great shows, but they, they were, I knew when I came off after the last metal man show, that that's the last one while I'm sick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen joining us here on E street radio in our Sirius XM studios in Las Vegas. Let's talk about more fun things, Bruce. Let's we're, we're past 2023. Yeah. We're in 2024. And so <laughs> now that the, these are rescheduled shows with the exception of Las Vegas and, and the, uh, the Asbury park, see here now festival. So, um, is this a continuation of last year's tour, or would you consider this uh, a new tour? Uh, I think we're approaching it like it's a new tour. There will be some things from last year's tour that will hold over some of my basic themes of mortality and and life, and those things, you know, are gonna I'm gonna keep set. But the, but I think I'm gonna move around the other parts of the set a lot more. So uh, uh, there'll be a, a much wider song selection going on. So we're okay. looking at it like, like uh, you know, it's a little bit of the old tour, but it's, we're looking at it like a new tour. Great, great. Well, I, you know, and I, you know, the certain those those staples that I think that you're talking about, uh, and one of the it it's was part of the tour last year, but I I heard it the other night again in Phoenix, and uh, Last Man Standing to me is just such a, a powerful moment in the show. Uh, you know, after all the the hard rocking and the, and the booty shaking and all that going on, it's just you. It's that guitar and that's the and that beautiful story that that you tell that sets up that song. So I, I'm I'm guessing that is one of the staples for the show. Yeah, that'll stay. Backstreets will stay the way it's covered. Some of that second half of the set is, is built so solid that'll a lot of it'll stay. You know, uh, the opening. Of, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen up top. You know, but it'll shift around and and uh, uh, I'm waiting to see myself just where where the show's going to take me. But we're like I say, for us, it's a new tour, a new day, and we're uh, approaching everything like that. And we're looking forward to having a lot of fun. Wonderful, wonderful. And I, I also have to mention, you know, the outstanding job that the, the backup singers that you've brought in, Lisa Lowell and Michelle Moore, and Curtis King, yeah. just amazing. You two on Night Shift is just, oh, that is so incredible. And, of course, well, a, 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 a great, dire. Yeah. yeah, he's a great singer, and, and Ada's tremendous, and Michelle, you know, Lisa, they're, they're, they're all, they're, they're a great section now. They, they've sung together enough to be a really terrific vocal section as our horn players have played enough together now to where they're just a tremendous horn section. And, you know, they had beautiful uh, uh, elements when the, when the moment calls for them, you know, the, the big E street band is, is, is capable of just about anything. <laughs> Well, you, you can hear it. You definitely hear it and see it when you see Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on this uh, tour. Uh, you uh, you were recently uh, did some television. You were on an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say right now. Yes, okay. it was. Oh, you know, all right. <laughs> I had a great time. Great. Yeah, it was funny just to see you know watching that episode, and there you were uh, doing doing your uh, piece there, and uh, you're also featured in the new Bon Jovi documentary, which I saw the uh, the trailer for on Hulu. Oh yeah, I, I interviewed. I got interviewed a little bit about John, and, and I was glad to do that. It was nice. He's worked. Uh, <laughs> he's a hardworking guy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, that and he is. We, we had a great time at the Music Cares, uh, where. Uh, uh, you know, he was honored that night. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that it was. John, uh, it, John's a great, a great guy, and we're very close. You know, I feel very close to John. Yeah, that that documentary is going to be available uh, later on in April on uh, Hulu. Um, so, uh, you know, all these years of touring, uh, is there a different approach now than it would be, say, years? I mean, you start off obviously as a bar band, you get up and play, but as the years go on and as the tour changes, has you have is your approach to touring? Uh, how has it evolved or changed throughout the years? Uh, well, even compared to last year, we're doing there's a little more room in between the shows to recuperate. 
So that's mm-hmm. that's the all that's the only change that I really see. The band gets on stage with the same attitude. You know, we're looking to kill the crowd and uh, you know send them home. Just just you know uh, haven't had the time of their lives and. and you know, that hasn't changed, and that's what we plan to be doing for the rest of this tour. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, and it's uh, we have the race rescheduled dates until April, and then you're back in Europe for the summer, and then uh, coming back into the States for the, some more makeup shows, and then uh, the See Here Now Festival at Asbury yeah. Park on September 15th. Wow, that's, I mean, I am so looking forward to that, seeing you and the band on the sand of Asbury <laughs> Park, where it all kind of started for you. I slept on that sand <laughs> <laughs> that I'll be playing on. I have slept on that sand. I have surfed <laughs> just north of that beach. So, yeah, that's it's going to be fun bringing it all back home. Well, we can't wait for that. We can't wait to see and you back the, out on the, the stage. Is great. There's, there's a bunch it of is a great, great acts they have, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bruce, I, we really appreciate you taking the time to call in and, and yeah. congratulations on a great night back out in Phoenix. And we'll see you tomorrow night at the T-Mobile Arena in, in Las Vegas. And uh, we'll see you out on the road. Yeah, I want to thank the fans for their patience uh, with the uh, uh, with the shows we had to move. I appreciate that very much and hanging in there with us. And uh, all I can say is we're going to give you the ride of your life. So we'll be seeing you. All right. We can't wait. Thanks again, Bruce. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. There you go. 